Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to make the claw tool. So we're going to start off by, of course, the base structure and logic of this claw tool. So in Houdini, what I want is, for now, I just want a simple grid or plane. I simulate that on collision. So let's set that up. So what I want is, like I said, I want sort of like a grid or a plane. Just going to take a grid here. And we're going to go inside so we can actually go to the geometry layer where we can edit this geometry. Then in here we have our grid. It has some extra topology or polygons, but we're not going to worry too much about that. And we're actually going to increase that. We're not just going to simply increase here the rows and columns. As you can see, like this will increase that. But we will add a remeshing node. So the remesher is mainly useful for the simulation. So when we do an actual simulation, a clot simulation, we need that extra poly count because the simulation needs to have that information to check on collisions and things like that. So we're going to create that extra geometry by a remeshing. So at all time, I can increase this to a higher count or lower count. So for now, that's already a good start. And I want to start building then my actual simulation. In Houdini, this is called a vellum solver. So whenever we type in vellum, we can see that we have a bunch of stuff. So vellum is used for cloud or soft bodies. What we want to do first is to use the configuration nodes. So when we ever have geometry, we want to use this, we need to configure some type of information. So right now I want to say that I need a, a vellum cloud configuration. So we're going to just plug it in over here. So this node is basically saying to the geometry that it needs to behave in a certain way. Like for example, uh, it's it's assigning the mass, the thickness, it's assigning st certain stretching information and things like that. So there are a bunch of settings that we can play around with. Now further to actually simulate this. So if I would now would press play, you can see nothing really happens. So we need to actually bring in an actual solver. So when we type in solver, we can see multiple solvers. So of course we want to use the vellum solver. We can connect these three dots. A quick tip here is to press the J key and then you will have this icon and then you can just quickly wire those up. So now let's go into the solver and press play. So you should be able to see that that is now falling. So that's our first step. So next step is then actually adding some sort of collision object. So we have a simulation, but it's just falling infinitely because it has, doesn't have any collision. So we want to create a test geometry. Uh, you can use the classic big head or you can use another test geometry. And we're going to plug this into the third input, which is saying collision geometry. And you can see that the collision geometry is getting passed from one node to another node. So it's just passing through those nodes. Now, what I notice is that it's actually in the middle of my grid. So I'm just going to uh, resize my grid a bit. So I'm going to click the icon here. I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to just uh, resize by holding shift. So we can drag quickly those sides. We can also like rotate this a little bit um, and then make sure it's nicely positioned here somewhere around this location. It doesn't have to be perfect this location. Uh, we can also add a ground geometry. So you can also here add a grid as ground shape and you can lower this like so and I can merge those together. So now we have a simple collision object with a ground shape. So I'm going to add that over here. So now when I would re-simulate this, we should actually see our cloth colliding with the big head and that uh, plane here. So this is a very basic simulation. So now you know a few basics on how to set up a simple simulation for cloth. So we have a cloth object and we have an actual collider object. Then we configure and then we run a solver. Now, what we noticed is that there might be a few things we want to tweak. For example, it's gliding off very quickly. Like you can see, like it immediately starts to glide uh, on the side. So 
let's go into our solver where we have our forces. So here we assign gravity. We can also do a little bit wind force, uh, but we also here have then friction. So when we increase our friction threshold, we will have less of the colliding going on. So if I increase this somewhat, we should now see less colliding and the clot being actually more sticking to its object. So this is many again useful in the game engine when we use this it should not fall off the object it should, it should actually stick a bit to the object like a normal cloth would so you can play around with this until you find a good value for now you can of course expose this in the digital asset so uh, for now it doesn't matter that much exactly what value it is now another thing that we noticed is the shapes are not looking that interesting or high quality because we are working with a lower resolution, as you can see. So I want to go back to my remeshing nodes and I want to increase my quality. So this means increasing the poly count. So instead of uh, going 0 0.2, let's go 0 0.05. So be careful with this value. If you go too high, you will, of course, have a price for that because the simulation will, of course, run slower. So right now, the simulation sh should still go pretty quick, as you can see. Like, it calculates still pretty fast. And we have, like, a, a, a more detailed result. Like, we have some nice shapes and wrinkles going on. So we have now a decent-looking result. Now, a couple things we can go. Tweak is also still in the Covellum configuration node. So this node holds, again, information about the mass, certain thickness, uh, certain drag forces, stretching, the uh, pinning groups. Um, I can talk a bit about stretching here. So stretching means like sort of like a stretching of the clot. So if I increase, for example, this scale, uh, you will see that suddenly the clot will actually be bigger uh, than it actually is. So you can see it's like a bit more stretching, which can give interesting shapes. And in some cases, like you can see, like there's more wrinkles going on here. Now, also interesting is the pin animation group. So sometimes you don't want uh, everything to be simulated of this object or of this cloth. So what we can do is we can make a group. So let's make some room here and add a group. So this will be a point group. So I'm going to switch this to points. We can give this a proper name, uh, like pin group. And we need to say that this is based on a bounding box. So we're going to enable bounding box here. So for the bounding box, we can actually input a second shape here. So if I input a box and load it in over here, I'm going to make sure my box is actually overlapping with my grid here like so. So this part is overlapping. Then in this group node, I want to say that my binding box needs to be based on the input. And now it's actually getting this box as input. So now we are getting all of these points. So with that information, we can use that in that volume constraint node. So now we can say that all the points are in the pin group should be seen as pin pin group or not be fully simulated. So let's reset our simulation. And you can see that now we have something like this. So this is a really nice result. I can also quickly visualize and for example turn off collision. Yes, I can also see it like so as well. So that looks really cool really interesting effects. And this can then also later be done fully in game. So we have our main setup here in action. So I will have a clot object. I will have an object for sticking certain parts of the clot. And then we also have a collision object. Now, what is still left to be done is double checking our UV data. So currently, if I would go to my UVs, there is none right there so what i would often do is after i do a remeshing i will do a uv step so in here we can do the classic uv unwrapping methods um, i prefer here to actually do a uv flatten 
So with the UV flatten, it will nicely keep one single object or shell, UV shell, and it will align it to the grid. So you can see that this is pretty good and wrapped. Uh, this is also like a pretty simple shape to wrap, of course. So when we run this to our uh, solver, we still have that simulation. And if I go here to my UV checker, and we can see that we have a nice wrap. So there is not that much distortion going on. It's pretty clean UV. You can also do UV after the simulation, but of course you might risk doing some weird things here and there. Um, like if I do an auto UV, then based on what you do, it might give weird results. Like as you could see, it's sort of like breaking up certain parts. So if I switch to UV, it's going to create something like this. So it's going to actually make multiple parts, uh, which is something you might not really want here. Uh, since you probably want just have want to have like one consistent UV, so be careful with that. Uh, you can also do UV flatten here as well, uh, but you might have some stretching. So you can see that there's some uh, stretching behavior. Um, so you can see that here. If I make this a bit bigger, I can, for example, see here that there is clearly like some bending going on. Like there is a lot of like bending of that UV compared to our original, which is just like perfectly aligned. So those are a few things uh, on UV. So just recommended doing it before and then in simulation, it will also keep the UV in mind. Now, a few things before finishing off is we can also do something like a post-process vellum. And in here, uh, we can do a few things. Uh, we have a smoothing option. So if I zoom in, for example, here, we can see that we can actually do like a smooth or blur on this. So be careful with this because, of course, it will, it will actually smooth some detail away. So you might need to be careful with that. Uh, we can also do next well subdivision, which, of course, can increase the quality. As you can see, like it will increase uh, the quality of this uh, cloth. It has way more uh, geometry to work with. So it might be interesting to do that. But of course, for a game engine, we actually want to do the other way around is to actually reduce this. Uh, we can also go here and, and give this an extrusion. So this is like a simple flat plane. But if we click extrude, uh, we can see that there will be like a small uh, extrusion here of that plot shape. So in case we, we are working with Unreal 5, so it has Nanite, so we can actually use this with Nanite enabled. Of course, this then needs to be a static object without like any movement. But what we want to do probably is to reduce it anyway. So I'm going to just load in here my poly reducer. And I'm going to start to reduce this to a lower level. So we're going to say, for example, 25% of my polygons. And this is actually way better than, of course, that full... Uh, result. Uh, what you can also do is you can also bake maps. If you're interested in that, you can use the maps maps baker. So my low poly is of course the reduced version, and then my high poly is of course that final output of the sim. Uh, and then we have that here. So then it will actually bake that. So you can build a name baker in the tool if you want that. So these are possibilities that you can do and explore. And what we also want to do as a last step is maybe adding a normal. So in case the normals were not would not be to your liking, we can, for example, here increase lower this, play around with the weighting method to, for example, have different results or tweak or fine tune uh, those normals. So with that, we have our base setup and we are then ready to make a digital astro of that and then later also test this out in Unreal and see how well that works. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it.